Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Several months ago, A Gallo sent me their dock card so that we could have a full Swatch With Me video. In that video, we talk more about this woman-owned small business that is dedicated to creating artisanal watercolors free of mercury, lead, cadmiums, and cobalts. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll post it in the card above and in the description below. After taking that first impressions look, A. Gallo offered to send me a custom palette of colors. I studied my swatch card diligently and created a palette that I thought I would enjoy working with. While A. Gallo did send me this palette to take a look at in more depth than the dot card, this video is not sponsored and they have not asked me to say anything about their company or their paints. As a gift for you, there is a code in the description that will give you 10% off your purchases from their website, but it is not an affiliate link and I do not get any compensation for your purchases. They usually restock about once a month, so if you are watching this video when it is released on January 22nd, today is a restock day, so head on over if you'd like to make a purchase. If not, keep an eye out on their Instagram for their next restock. You've been watching me do a bit of an unboxing here, which if you've watched other videos on this brand, you have probably already seen. Their packaging is both beautiful and sturdy. The tins come in an elegant box and are wrapped in two layers of paper. One is a simple sleeve for protection, while the other is a specialty marbled paper. Inside the tin, you'll find a swatch card made from cotton watercolor paper. In my case with the custom palette, it came with a blank insert for me to fill in, while I believe their standard palettes have the color names printed on the sheets. Their palettes come with a synthetic Tinturino travel brush, and mine was a size 6, though I do think that the size of the brush might vary. Each hand-poured pan is wrapped in hand-painted watercolor paper strips to show you what each color looks like and also lists the pigment information. While unwrapping the pans, I did notice that some of the pigment rubbed off onto my fingers from the two colors that contained phthalo pigments. Ideally, watercolor pigments should be bound to their binders and not rub off once fully dried on paper, though I have heard that phthalo colors are notoriously difficult to hand mull into paints. I did test this again with my other dried swatches painted on my own paper samples, and the two colors that I mentioned did continue to rub off, so it's not just on this one type of paper. It's not a deal breaker, but it is good to know. Once they were all unwrapped, I snugly tucked them into the palette and we were ready to go. Since I have an entire video dedicated to swatching and many other videos here on YouTube do the same, I thought I would quickly let you know which colors I selected for this palette so that we can just jump straight into some of the more practical applications and comparisons for these paints. The colors I chose are Vermilion Red, Pietra Rosa, Zirconium Blue, Ultramarine Blue Dark, Harbor Blue, Olive Green Deep, Yellow Ochre Burgundy, Transparent Red Oxide, More Leone, Burnt Umber Brownish, Chromite Brown, and Payne's Gray. I wanted to start the practical demonstrations by showing you how these paints compare with some other handmade brands that I have on hand. I chose three colors that had similar matches across the four brands that I have, and I am going to show you how they both re-wet and what they look like on paper. I did not pre-wet any of the pans and I left the footage in real time so that you can see how long it takes each pan to re-wet. For this first pan of Ultramarine, I had to add more pigment on a second pass to get the swatch pigmented enough, but for all the other swatches, I work up as much paint as I can before painting so that the paint swatches are very saturated with just one brush load. The brands are A. Gallo from Italy, Stone Ground Paint Co. from Canada, Nila Calori from Italy, and Blue Pine Arts from India. The colors are an Ultramarine Blue, or PB29, which is fairly comparable across all brands, 
and then some version of PR101 and PY42 or PY43. These latter two pigments can vary in hue, so I use the closest comparison that I have in my collection. However, please note that I do not have every color from these companies, and the color that I used here might not be their most comparable color in the brand's line. I did the best that I could, and I hope that it's helpful. Just please keep in mind that they might not be perfect comparisons. All of that being said, I think that each brand has areas that they really shine in. Since this is an A Gallo review, I'm going to be focused on their swatches in my commentary. Their Ultramarine granulates strongly, but is less pigmented compared to the others. It did seem to take the longest to dry and had a texture that indicated that there might be some more binder to pigment in the ratio. The Morleone, don't know if I'm saying that right, hopefully I'm close, is absolutely stunning. You all know how much I love almost every opaque PR101 out there, but this one is pretty special. 
Its hue is unique amongst the handmade samples that I have here, and it manages to both be granulating while also being velvety at the same time. If you remember from the Swatch With Me video, A. Gallo offers six or seven versions of PY43. So this one that I got in the palette is just the one of the seven that I chose. It is a middle to warm leaning yellow ochre that is semi-opaque. How it stacks up against the others is going to be entirely based on your preferences. Next, I have a little segment on some color mixing. I didn't want to spend too much time on this, but I did want to show you what this color selection is capable of. I chose warm primaries for this palette, meaning I'm going to get very vibrant oranges, but desaturated purples and earthy greens from that main trio of mixing primaries. If you want brighter greens and clear purples, you'd want to go for a different selection of pigments for your main triad. The Vermilion Red made from PR255 is definitely the strongest color of these three and can easily overpower the other two in mixes, so I'll be playing around with some different ratios of these colors mixed together to find the right balance. Next, I wanted to play with the Harbor Blue and more Leone for a really gorgeous, moody, granulating mixture. I'm showing the footage here so you can kind of see how I'm playing with the colors on this page and then marking them with the two colors that went into making them. But we're going to fast forward to a scan of the whole sheet so that we're not here all day. Overall, I wanted to get a feel for the neutrals on this palette, which mostly come down to ultramarine or Payne's gray mixed with either an earth red or the vermilion. I also paired the vermilion with the olive green deep for a really intense warm brown mixture, which we will see later in this video. You can really see how much these handmade paints granulate and mixes, and I think that's where they really shine. So let's see how they handle in an actual painting. For this painting, I sketched a cassowary in an A5 at your perfect sketchbook, the one with the gray cover with a Faber-Castell polychromos in the color Caput Mortem Violet. The reference photo is one that I took at the LA Zoo back in 2012, and I am starting off with a Tintoretto size 6 paintbrush that came with the set. Unlike most of my paintings where I try to use as few colors as necessary to achieve the results I'm looking for, in this painting, I'm going to use as many as possible so that you can see them all in one painting, or at least most of them. I'm starting with the Zirconium Blue, slightly neutralized with the Pietra Rosa. As we move to the neck, I'll be bringing in some of the Harbor Blue for a darker value. Depending on how well you know my style of painting, you may or may not notice how much I've been struggling with this brush that comes with the palette. As a general rule, I try not to use two new supplies at once so that if I'm having a difficult time, I can isolate which supply is the concern. The Tintoretto is a fine quality brush, but I am used to working with a brush with a much finer point that holds more water and pushes the paint around less. At the bottom of the neck of this bird, I couldn't tell if the brush was causing these really strange hard lines within the wet washes or if it was the paints themselves. So I will switch to my silver black velvets in a little bit to try and eliminate one of these two new factors. We'll come back to that. Moving to the base of the crest, I'm going to guess that this was a bit of that harbor blue mixed with the Payne's gray and more Leone. I'm going to start laying down my value map so that I know which areas we'll need to focus on getting darker as we progress through the painting. The iris of the eye is transparent red oxide with a bit of the burnt umber in the inner corner for now, though we will get darker in the next layer. Here is where I switch to the silver black velvets to try and better control my edges. In this area, I was using chromite brown mixed with a touch of the Payne's gray to deepen the value. Even with the brushes that I am most comfortable with, I still had some trouble controlling the edges of this paint. 
Given some time, it's definitely something I could adjust to, but I do want to mention it in case you happen to paint like I do. I would say, at least with the selection of paints that I have, uh, which vary from earth tones to phthalos, none of them are particularly staining watercolors. They lift very easily. This quality is great if you want to have more time to work with your washes, to soften off edges after a color has even already started to dry. However, if you work in a lot of layers like I do, it will require some adjustments to your technique, especially if you're using a more rigid synthetic brush like the one that this set comes with. However, I do want to reiterate that while these may not be the easiest paints for me to use with the way I paint, it doesn't mean that I don't like them or wouldn't recommend them to others. These paints have incredibly stunning granulation and are absolutely gorgeous when used in loose, wet washes. I think they would excel in the hands of artists who paint using only one or two layers and really allow the paints to shine on their own without adding too much detail. While this video is a more comprehensive review than my first impressions video or simply swatching them, there is still a lot more that I would like to try with these paints before finalizing my thoughts on them. As I mentioned at the start of this demonstration, this is in my Etcher Perfect sketchbook as well, which I am well practiced in and feel comfortable working with. So I don't think that the lifting issues I was having were due to the paper, but I could be wrong. So I'd still like to try using these paints on some arches paper, which is undoubtedly my most used surface that I paint on. That will help me isolate seeing if it's the paints that I'm having trouble with lifting when I don't want them to, or if it's just the brush. I'd also like to perhaps try some simpler forms that don't require quite as much detail as I was aiming for in this particular piece.
In an effort to show off this brand's best qualities, I did decide to add a background using a mixture of the Vermilion and Olive Green Deep to really let the colors just run wild and granulate to their heart's content. But of course, I also want to hear from you. Have you used a Gallo watercolors yourself? What are some of your favorite papers and brushes to use them with? Let me and everyone else know in the comments below how your favorite colors in this brand shine their best. If you miss a Gallo sale today, you can also see what Jackson's has in stock, for which I will post an affiliate link in the description as well for. And again, you can check out Agala's Instagram to follow when their next website restock will be. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Thank you to A Gallo for sending these paints for me to try out and share with all of you. I hope you enjoyed a closer look at these beautiful handmade watercolors. Of course, thanks to my patrons for their unyielding support. And until next time, my friends, happy painting.